I'm really nervous. <laughs> I don't want to let, I do not want to let my PA community down, okay? What's up you guys, Zidane, and welcome back to my channel. So, for those of you who are new, thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey right now. Stay a while, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Everyone that has been rocking with me for the past year and a half, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys again for watching, and welcome. So, I'm really excited about this, you guys. I guess you could tell by like me just being all like super bubbly, but I'm super excited about this because, you know, people are always like, I've heard a lot of PAs and like PA students and stuff say and even some like physicians but like oh you know PA school is like cramming two four years of med school into two years of PA school and I'm like oh, okay like I don't know because I've never been to med school so I wanted to kind of test it out for myself that's why I was happy when Lecturio offered to sponsor this video and let me try out their app it has a bunch of questions for their QBank uh, different various different questions for USMLE Comlex and MBBS so I'm gonna do some of the USMLE questions to see how I do see if PA school is like teaching me what I need to know or teaching me more than what I need to know you know or you know teaching me on par as a like a med student I don't know so we're gonna check this out I'm gonna show it to you on the screen as I go through some of these questions very briefly for you and then I'll talk about the app okay so I have my Lecturia app here um, so it has like a question of the day I don't know like I'm really nervous <laughs> I don't want to let, I do not want to let my PA community down, okay? So by no means am I like the end all be all for a PA students and their knowledge, but let's see. Oh my gosh, this question is long. 55 year old man presents the emergency department with shortness of breath and weakness. Past medical history includes coronary artery disease, arterial hypertension, chronic heart failure. He reports that the symptoms started around two weeks ago and have been gradually worsening. His temperature is 36.5, which is 97.7. BP 135 or 100, heart rate 90, respirations 21, O2 sat 94. On examination, a mild JVD is noted. Um, auscultation reveals bilateral loud crackles, hitting a team on lower extremities is noted. Okay. His plasma brain uh, BMP level on rapid bedside assay is 500. Chest x ray included indicates enlarged cardiac silhouette. Okay. His, he is diagnosed with acute on chronic left heart failure with pulmonary edema and receives immediate care with ferrosamides. Okay, so he's, um, they use Lasix to like get the water off. The physician proposes a treatment with a new, oh gosh, naprolycillin inhibitor. Which of the following changes below are expected to happen if the patient is enrolled in the trial? I have no idea. Like. <laughs> No idea. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what um, we're talking about right now. Okay. Um, so we're going to do increased water reabsorption by the renal. Okay. I'll probably say that. Nepro. Like, so like that sounds like it's dealing with the kidneys. I may be wrong. If he's having left heart failure, he's going to have edema. So... Um, collecting ducts is what causes the water is where like water is reabsorbed I don't know guys so I'm gonna just go with that like I'm not even gonna draw this out let's see mm. I was wrong <laughs> I was completely wrong okay so that was a fail all right so I'm gonna end that end this test cool and then let me go to more questions 45 year old female undergoes endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreo pancreatography for evaluation of suspected biliary strictures. The ERCP identifies two ducts in the pancreas, a small ventral and a large dorsal duct. 
a diagnosis of congenital pancreatic anomaly is made, which of the following statements best describe this anomaly? Most of the patients with this condition presents early in childhood with abnormal abdominal symptoms. I mean, well, that obviously doesn't make any sense. She's like 45 degrees. She would have had those symptoms already. I said 45 degrees. She's 45 years old. Oh my goodness. It is a rare congenital anomaly of the pancreas. Uh, patients with recurrent episodes of pancreatitis due to this condition do not require any intervention. Uh, please. Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography. That is such a tongue twister. Scanning of the abdomen is the most sensitive and non invasive diagnostic technique for this condition. Um, I mean, I think stack sign is lead poisoning. I'm gonna go with this. I don't know. I got it! <laughs> All right, PA school, you are on it with that one. Well, I am glad I got that. Oh my goodness. Like, I don't know. Am I sweating? <laughs> am I sweating yet? I don't know. Okay, two year old boy, let me, ch oh, let me see what stuff they have here. Mark. Okay, so we can flag the questions, we can see lab values. Ooh, we can add notes. What is this about? I don't know. I don't know. I'll see that note later, but I'll look at it. So, and then we can do reverse. Okay, so I'm going to do reverse. A two-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department by his mother for evaluation of severe abdominal pain that began one hour ago. On examination, the patient is afibrile and has diffuse rebound tenderness with acute left lower quadrant pain, a stool glyc test is positive small bowel perforation is suspected what is the embryologic structure that is the underlying cause of this patient's presentation um so like i paid attention to pathophysiology but like it wasn't easy so um this is like a patho question i'm gonna go with this no i mean they're trying to trick me with this vermiform appendix because there is rebound tenderness left lower quadrant but you know like if you do like rothstein's for appendicitis you'll get that um that tender that tenderness uh but i'm gonna Okay, yes, a Meckel's diverticulum. Okay, so it extends outside of the ilium. So I like this because it's giving you like all of the reasons why vermiform appendix is a finger-like structure that buds off the cecum near the ileocecal valve. So yeah, you know, like they're trying to trick you and be like, oh, well maybe it's like appendicitis, like it's a Rothstein sign, but it wasn't. So, there we go. All right, so I got what? I got one wrong already, and then I had like the other two right. A 22-year-old woman presents to the gynecologist for evaluation of amenorrhea and dyspareunia. Okay. The patient states that she recently got married and has been worried about getting pregnant. The patient states that she has never had a period and that sex has always been painful. On examination, the patient is Tanner stage 5 with no obvious developmental abnormalities. The vaginal exam is limited to secondary, limited secondary to patient discomfort. The vaginal okay, canal is hypoplastic with no visual, visualizations. Let me see. So what was my things? What can I do here? Can I? No, I can't. All right. So what is the most likely cause of this patient? It would be really cool if I can highlight um, some of this stuff, but I can't. Um, like the hypoplastic vagina and Tanner stage five, dyspareunia and amenorrhea. Um, it's not hyperprolactinemia. That's so oh, that's stupid. She's not like that's dumb. Um, and it's not PCOS. They would talk about like you know she has a bunch of hair and all this extra stuff. Exposure, you know. So it's Turner or Mullerian. Um, I believe like I'm pretty sure it's Mullerian uh, Turner syndrome is 
I don't think it has those things. Mullerian is the one that is like amenorrhea, dyspareunia, but it's really the hypoplastic vaginal canal. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I am killing it, and I am excited about that. The Mullerian duct, also known as the, okay, whatever, is an embryologic structure found in both male and female embryos. The Mullerian duct forms the fallopian tubes, uterus and cervix. So this is cool. Like I like that it um, gives you everything here on the app. It's like telling you, uh, like giving you a little, you know, just kind of review. And that is like what you want from any QBank that you are studying from. You want to make sure that they're telling you why your answer is correct and why the other answers are incorrect. Two-year-old male infant fails to pass meconium for the first 36 hours of life. He was born on term vaginally to a healthy 19-year-old woman from uncomplicated pregnancy at birth. His weight was 8.6 pounds. At the time of presentation, he weighed 8.4 pounds. His vital signs are as follows, blood pressure 70 over 50, heart rate 130, respiratory rate 33, temperatures 98.6 on physical exam. He is active and appears hungry. His abdomen, his abdomen is distended. No masses can be identified on palpation, okay? Bowel sounds are active on aus auscultation. The patient's anus is patent. An upper GI study with oral contrast demonstrates normal and anatomy okay so it's not like pyloric stenosis barium enema is then administered which reveals a large amount of retained barium contrast with dilate signaling colon the retention what which option describes the cause of this patient's symptoms i honestly am a little unsure about this hypertrophy of the muscular layer of the lower sigma cone. No. Alright, so if there's retention of the barium contrast with a dilated sigma colon, I'm gonna just go with uh I don't know. It's I don't think it's that I don't know. I'm gonna probably go with this. I probably got it wrong, but we'll see. <laughs> I got it wrong, y'all. I feel bad. Not okay. Not okay. <laughs> All right, last question. A 17-year-old female presents to the OBGYN clinic for, for evaluation of primary amenorrhea. Like, I need to make sure that I get all these OBGYN questions right because this is definitely what I want to go into. And so <laughs> it's going to look bad for me if I get these wrong. She is well-developed with well-nourished female who looks her state at age. She has reached Tanner stage four, breast and pubic hair development. The external genitalia is normal in appearance. She has an older sister who underwent menarche at 12. A speculum exam reveals a short and vaginal canal with no cervix. No uterus is visualized during ultrasound, but both ovaries are noted. What is likely pathophysiology underlying this condition? Again, pathophysiology. Um, so exo is Turner's, so that's not it. Are the ovaries to produce estrogen? No. Um, genotype XXY, that's Klein filters. This is like Mullerian again. So Mullerian, it's one of these ducks, but the, I think it's a para, the paramecin. Para. Okay, come on. doing it y'all all right so i'm at 80 percent um cool all right embryology and gastroenterology is the one that i missed i did want to check out this whole uh scan your book thing so this app this lecture app has this thing where you can scan your book and you can get lectures so i mean it's called lecture so they do lectures like live you know video lectures for you, so I want to check this out. So I'm gonna do hypothyroidism, and I scanned it, and now I'm gonna hit OK, and it's gonna upload it, and I'm gonna see if I can get some video lectures on hypothyroidism, which is good because if you are a visual learner, then this is the app for you. Like you want to actually see somebody talking to you about this. So 
Let's see, everything is highlighted green, goiter, thyroid nodules, common substance related. Okay, what is that? So it's giving me like karyotypes and stuff. Is that even in, oh, goiters. Oh look, so it has goiters there. Does it have anything about hypothyroidism though? Let's see what they have here. And here we'll take a look at the differences of goiter versus nodules by the time we're done with the section. Oh, okay, so there we go. Um, That's like the same picture that was in the book that I scanned. But that is cool. So um, a really like cool way to just kind of learn, you know, six minutes. I can spend six minutes out of my day. Look at that. I did a question, you guys, and it messed my, um, my thing up. So I'm at 83% memorized now. Whatever. Anyways, ultimately, what this video says is that PA school has taught me something, okay? And I can answer some of these med school questions correctly, which is good. I feel good about myself. <laughs> And I feel great about PA school and the path that I've chosen to take. Um, some of those questions were really, really like in depth and detailed and kind of like tricky in how they were asking it, which is what they do with, um, you know, our pants as well, which is our certification exam for uh, PA students. But, um, you know, whatever, like, I don't know if how it stacks up, but like I learned something, we're doing our thing, y'all doing y'all thing. Please let me know if you are a med student and you answered some of those questions with me, let me know how well you did um, on those questions. And don't be lying, don't be saying, oh, Adana, I got them all right, just because you're in med school, okay? We all friends, <laughs> we're all friends here. You could be honest with me. All right, okay, so if you are interested in getting this app I have an affiliate link in the description box below um, so please use it absolutely use it if you're a pre PA um, student and you kind of want to check out what some of these questions may be looking like or a pre-med student check out the the link in the description box below as well this is good like I said for PA students in that you can just have more exposure to questions and um, the material. So it's a good option for you in that sense. It is not specifically geared, geared towards the pants. So that is a downside to it, but you will still like know the material and you will know it inside and out if you are actually going through these questions day in, day out, and just kind of looking at all the lectures that they have available to you. So be sure to do that. Leave a question in the comment section below for me if you have any questions on this or anything else. Uh, again, let me know how you did. I really want to know uh, if you guys did just as well as me or not. Thank you so much, Lecturia, for sponsoring this video and allowing me to just kind of look at these questions and see how well me, a PA student, stacks up against some of these USMLE type board questions. I feel good about myself. Am I sweating? I was sweating like a little bit. I don't know because I was so nervous. I did not want to let us down PA students <laughs> I think I did okay but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it and uh, follow me on Instagram at Adama PA uh, and if you have not already done so go ahead and like this video and subscribe thank you guys I will talk to you guys next time bye